Hello Grade Elevens. Today I'm looking at page 104 in your workbooks. We're still on the section of Loki. They are doing an auger and clearly this looks like a big auger that they're doing here because they've just given you this whole page to do one auger. The information now what you'll know here, what's been different is they've changed where your views are. Often this has been your top view and this was your front view. Now they've just changed the position. Please don't get confused by that. If you are worried about that, you could obviously just take your piece of paper and rotate it so that it looked like how you were doing it before. So please don't let that confuse you. It's still the same process. It's still an auger and you've done them before. So the information they said R is the start point. We've got the core with a diameter of 30. We've got the outside edge of the auger with a diameter of 80. It says our pitch is 60. It's one and a half. That would explain why that's 90 so the pitch is 60 plus another half of, of 30 giving us that height of the length measurement there of 90. Same process that we've done before so what I want to start with is by drawing the circles. The second step is to draw my rectangle. My third step is to do my pizza slices. My fourth step was the height divisions. Let's get started with our circles. I've done my two circles with a diameter of 80 and a diameter of 30. For a change, they don't have the center lines in here, so I'm going to just put those in now. And I'm also going to carry on with that center line for my other view going across there. As far as my processes, I've now done my circles, now I want to do my rectangle. So we're going to take our outside edges across and mark off the length of 90. There I've marked off my length of 90 and I've got my center line going through there. My next step now that I want to follow is to do my pizza slices. There I've completed my pizza slices. Now I need to mark off my height divisions. What do we need to remember? That the length was 60 for one turn, which if we divide that by our 12 segments, gives us a measurement of five millimeters. So I'm going to mark off those five millimeter measurements now. There I have marked off my length divisions. Now they've said to us this is a right handed thread, so if I take my right hand here, which direction is my index finger going? So they've told us this is PQ is the start point and hence right hand will be coming around here. If you can imagine holding that as well, the right hand from that point is going to come around that shape so we'll see this front end disappear around the back and then come around for another half turn so that should indicate my direction that I want to mark off 
would be anti-clockwise. If that's our start point, the right hand thread is going to come around that way. So this is our next step, is to label. So this is the start point. There is the labeling done on the outside of the auger as well as the core of the auger. PQ is the start point, meaning this would be our start point here. My next step is to project my pizza slices. And just label those. There I have those labeled and now I can follow my theory of two points. Zero starts there, one lines up with one, two lines up with two, three, four, Seven starts coming back. Let me go this way for you. Eight. Nine is in the center. Ten. Eleven. And twelve. There is our one full turn. I'm going to carry on and complete this shape now. There I have my complete helix for the auger, the outside part of that auger. Now I'm going to project my pizza slices for my core. I've marked off those pizza slices here on the other side so they don't get confused. 0, 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, back to 7, 8, 10, 11, and back to 12. Now let's match up our theory of two points and get them plotted. Point 0 starts on the point there. Our next step is 1. So let's line up point 1 with horizontal 1, point 2 with horizontal 2, here is horizontal 3 which will give me the same point, point 4 is the next line, 5, 6 is the edge of our core, 7 we start coming back, 8 lines up with 8, 9 is on the middle again, 10, 11, and 12 is our one turn. And I'm going to carry on with the remaining points. There I have all my points marked off. Like I've done before, what I want to do is do the inside core helix then do the outside core helix and then finish off the core. If this is my starting point turning right hand this would be visible. So let's remember our first three points here in a straight line. That's your test for your accuracy. A slight little dip down here. 
and then curve it to our start point on the other side slight little dip up and curve it to the core that now goes around the back of my shape around the back of my shape and it becomes visible again here so there's going to be my slight little curve and it should be the same as that shape slight change in direction here the middle three points are on a straight line your test for your accuracy slight bend there and that goes up to the end of our shape so there's one turn plus the half now let's do the outer edge I'm going to drawing up my three points here remember those need to be on a straight line a slight little bend here and the curve at the end same on the other side try and line that up nicely and here is our curve now because this is the edge this is still going to come around you can see this little piece here now this part is going around the back of the shape so where it's going to hit the core it's going to disappear so on its way to hitting this point here remember those three lines need to be in a straight line as it touches the core that's the end on the other side as it comes out from the core you're going to see it again now it joins up to that edge curve that up remember these three lines should be on a straight line and this is visible again slight bend there and it curves into our top of the shape now we can finish off the core So here I'm finishing off the core, there's my core there, and that side, on the other side, and the edges now. And there is the completed walker on page 104.